you're joining the State of Business Primetime News Bulletin on Art Television. I'm Nishani Pigera. Let's first take a look at tonight's headlines. Attracting FDIs into the country, key priority of the government, says Malik Samaravikrama. IRRI pledges to provide assistance to combat adverse impact of climate change on local rice production. In our main story tonight, Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samaravikrama says that attracting foreign direct investments into the country is a key priority of the government. Minister Samara Vikram also made the following remarks during the inauguration ceremony of the Sri Lanka Investment and Business Conclave 2018 in Colombo last evening. The Investment and Business Conclave 2018 is organized by the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce in association with the Ministry of Development Strategies and International Trade, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Board of Investment of Sri Lanka, Department of Commerce and the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. This three-day event expects to offer opportunities aimed at enriching institutional, corporate and individual investors and business houses with a comprehensive set of guidelines for their investment decisions. We are very conscious of the high debt burden and have introduced new measures to build up our strength, like the Liability Management Act that was passed in Parliament last month. We are confident of meeting our foreign liabilities and global investors continue, continue to remain positive about Sri Lanka. A good example was that the recent sovereign dollar bond of US dollars, two and a half billion, was nearly three times oversubscribed. Having stabilized the economy over the past, uh, the last couple of years, the key priority of the country right now is attracting foreign direct investment. During this conclave, conclave you will no doubt realize that Sri Lanka is an excellent regional hub for you to locate in. Sri Lanka is uniquely placed on the western edge of Asia as well as in the center of the Indian Ocean. This geography offers very unique opportunities to investors from around the world. Addressing the gathering further, Minister Malik Samarikrama noted that steps are being taken to halve the number of days for buying land and property registration from 51 days to 26 days to ensure land availability for all new investors. To address the issue of land availability for new investors and being mindful of water and waste concerns, we are preparing new industrial zones for foreign investors to locate. Sri Lanka hasn't had a new zone in over 15 years and the new zones will be open for private investors to develop in partnership with the Board of Investment. These initiatives are being complemented by comprehensive trade policy reforms articulated in the new trade policy of our government. In the recent budget, protectionist para tariffs on over 1,200 items were removed and the rest slated for removal this year and the next year. Meanwhile, Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangala Samaravira stated that Sri Lanka will obtain preferential market access to India in the near future, which will make Sri Lanka the only country that has market access to China, Europe and India. Sri Lanka in the process of implementing comprehensive unilateral trade liberalization. This includes the rationalization of para-tariffs, which add costs to business and consumers. In addition to unilateral trade reform, the government is in the process of entering into strategic trade agreements with key regional economies. We recently signed our first comprehensive FTA with Singapore, and two other comprehensive FTAs are being negotiated this, at this very moment with China, India and other ASEAN nations. 2,400 para-tariffs will be eliminated within the next two years by 2020. Re removing barriers of, to trade and FDI in services, a single window for investment approvals, eliminate non-tariff barriers in exporting as well as importing goods, targeted promotion of identified sectors for investment in Sri Lanka, establishment of new export processing investment zones, improvement to business climate through digitalization of key processes such as land registry and integrating government agency approvals. The State of Business will return with more news after this short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching The State of Business. Director General of the International Rice Research Institute, Dr. Matthew Morrell, stated that they are ready to provide a required technical assistance in utilizing satellite technology to reduce the impact of climate change on Sri Lanka's rice production.
Dr. Mara made these remarks when he met with the President Maitri Pada Sirisena at the President's official residence in Colombo yesterday. During the meeting, Dr. Morrell emphasized upon the importance of being self-sufficient to meet the demand for rice consumption nationally with the climatic changes faced by the countries in the region. The Director General further noted that his institution is keen to work with the Department of Agriculture to increase the quality of rice production in Sri Lanka and to provide technical assistance to reduce post-harvest losses. Meanwhile, expressing his views, President Maitri Parasirisena stated that the country's rice production has been affected mainly due to climatic changes that were experienced in the recent past. Speaking further, the President also stated that the main objective of the government is to transform Sri Lanka into a self-sufficient nation to face such challenges. Moreover, President Sirisen extended his gratitude to the Director General of the International Rice Research Institute for visiting Sri Lanka and said that he would be willing to visit the International Rice Research Institute in Philippines in the near future. The Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka announced the launch of Techno Sri Lanka 2018, the National Engineering and Technology Exhibition in Colombo last evening. The exhibition will be held from the 12th to the 14th of October this year under the theme Engineering the Green Future. The event was graced by the Secretary to the Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development, Nihal Rupa Singha, IESL staff members, engineering professionals, chairmen, CEOs and business heads of leading industries and organizations related to engineering and technology. The Techno Sri Lanka exhibition is the most preferred platform in Sri Lanka for showcasing latest technology advancements and providing opportunities for local and foreign industrialists and pioneers to display their products and services. Being in the forefront of innovations and inventions, engineers are working hard to minimize the impact of infrastructure projects on the environment by incorporating green principles to planning, design and execution of engineering. As an event organized by the apex body for the engineering profession in the country, Techno Sri Lanka 2018 would be an ideal platform for visitors to experience the latest products and services using the latest green future compliant technology from all over the world on display on one Techno Sri Lanka holds its reputation high for being the exhibition which calls out the most direct influence of cutting edge technology from global arena to the development of the country. As Sri Lanka is on the lookout for ways and means to fast track its development, the government sector needs active support of the private enterprises to benchmark performance and create healthy competition. Techno Sri Lanka is an ideal setting by the a common platform for both exposing and, prom and promoting the latest engineering technologies of the industry among engineers involved in the development of the country, whether public or private sector. In more news tonight, the SLMA Health Run and Walk 2018 is scheduled to be held on the 24th of June at the BMICH. The Sri Lanka Medical Association plans to hold the Health Run and Walk to raise awareness regarding obesity under the theme of Eat Wise, Drop a Size this year. The Health Walk and Run will be held on the 24th of June from 6.15 a.m. onwards at the BMICH premises under the patronage of the Health Minister. Moreover, a children's art competition is scheduled to be held in collaboration with the Ministry of Women and Child Affairs, Ministry of Education and Atlas Sri Lanka. The best 100 works of art will be displayed at the BMICH with prizes given to all 100 children. Stocks ended in the red today. Let's have a look at the details after this short break. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The all-share price index dropped 33.33 points to close at 6,232.4 and the S&P SL20 dropped 37.06 points to close at 3,436.46. Turnover was 341.4 million rupees and 14 million shares were traded. And here are the day's foreign exchange rates.
And with that, we wind up the show for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for joining us. Good night.